The following is a hockey podcast out of Vancouver and Surrey, British Columbia. It'll only consist of a lot of puck talk and even more BS, or in actual words, banter and satire. Enjoy and as always, go Canucks, go. Uh, let's not raise a banner for the Pacific Division, but let's celebrate the fact that the Canucks bounce back. Yeah, your team is legit. Uh, we're 50 wins in to this season of hockey, and we have so much to look forward to, so much to be grateful for. And man, oh man, is Niels Hoaglander going to be the most exciting player in the playoffs for your Canucks? Let's talk about it on this episode of Locked on Canucks. Your Locked on Canucks, your daily podcast on the Vancouver Canucks, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Okay, okay, Kyle Bowen here at the Don't Doze Art Lab. Doing my thing, talking to you and you and you and you and you and you after you were just named a Pacific Division champion. Yes, the Vancouver Canucks clinch it in Game 81 against the Calgary Flames with a 4-1 victory at Rogers Arena. And I would overall say that that game was fun. It had a little bit of everything. It had a lot of bite. It had a lot of aggression. And I've said all those things, and I've already mentioned Niels Hoaglander and I haven't done the obvious, right? Off the top, Thatcher Demko, he returned, and Thatcher Demko looked like the most important player for your Vancouver Canucks. A calm, cool, collected performance, a poised performance. I think he had 39 saves or 38 saves. And yeah, overall, again, to use the word, I feel full. I do. And yeah, I know earlier, right? Earlier, Kyle Bowen pessimistic a little bit with the lineup, the combinations. And we'll get into more of that tomorrow, okay? Tomorrow morning. Yes, tomorrow morning we'll be live around 8 or 9 a.m. Uh, more news on everything moving forward into the playoffs on tomorrow's episode. Blah, blah, blah. Let's get to the game. Let's get to the comments. I'm only going to be here for a short time, right, at the Don't Doze Art Lab. Man, oh, man, the Canucks, a 4-1 victory. I'm all over the place. It's 10-15. And your Canucks, again, are Pacific Division champions, okay? For real. And look at this comment, okay? Mr. Whale in the comments, Mr. Whale in the Discord, confused on who the Vancouver Canucks are playing in the playoffs. Look, it's not decided yet. Nashville locked into wild card number one. Do the math. Try to do it. Now, they're not going anywhere. Now, that being said, uh, since the Dallas Stars have one more game left, since they haven't locked up first in the West, the Vancouver Canucks at this point could still play, what, three different teams, uh, the Kings, the Golden Knights, and the Nashville Predators. And you know the deal, okay? Come on, we have the Don't Those Art Lab. We full of that West Coast bias. I hope you absorb in this too, okay? For real. I don't give a beep who we play. Uh, the Canucks are going to bring it. It's guaranteed. You got to notice the little things. You got to notice the little big things. Speaking of which, Niels Hoaglander brings it every night. Niels Hoaglander, a thorn, game in and game out. Niels Hoaglander, quite possibly the X factor for your Vancouver Canucks. Niels Hoaglander, a playoff performer. Niels Hoaglander makes you feel closer to the games that matter, okay? His battle rate is unreal. He has that bite. He's tenacious. He has that skill. 24 goals now in the season. And man, oh man, gets suplex DDT'd by Rasmus Anderson, that POS at the end of the game. And it just goes to show you that, again, he's just, he's just in it. Oh, what a hockey player. What a hockey player. And look at this comment, okay, from Mr. VH. I like the bite from Hoaglander tonight, but he needs to be slightly more care careful, right? He's basically a 30-goal scorer now. Need him on the ice, not in the box. Niels Hoaglander, I don't know, man. I don't know if you're ever going to be able to... I tell this guy to be tame out there, okay? This guy's always laying the body. Always being our version of a POS. Getting under the skin of all these players. Being public enemy number one. How many times have we seen Niels Hoaglander be targeted? How many times have we seen Niels Hoaglander target other players? The dude is that guy. So, so entertaining. And I would love to learn more about this guy. Didn't he grow up in a village of like 100 people in Sweden? And then he becomes this, this wizard on the ice, a very skillful player, but he has that attitude. 
He has that FU about him. Definitely a fan favorite moving forward. I cannot wait for Niels Hoaglander to get his first shift in the NHL playoffs. The, the real NHL playoffs, right? Uh, speaking of which, uh, that's going to be the case for a lot of these players, okay? They're going to walk into Rogers Arena for that game, 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, sometime next week. Uh, they're going to hear Vancouver for the first time, right? Because they haven't heard Vancouver yet. And what's going to happen? It's going to it's gonna give them the juice. And you got to draw it back to it. Niels Hoaglander. Yes, the Niels Hoaglander first period shift in game one of the playoffs. Remember this conversation that you and I are having. Because he's going to make that crowd roar. Man, oh man. Uh, Mark Holland. Talking about Garland, okay? Garland. Oh, sorry. Mark Helen. My bad. Garland talking about, or Garland being a beast, okay? And then taking down the giant. Connor Garland, Niels Hoagland, the smallest guys on the team, right? And this is why I constantly say, right, the Hindu on the program, size doesn't matter. Take it from me, 30 and a half years old. I've gotten through life pretty well being kind of small, if you know what I mean. All you got to do is pack a punch. All you got to do is bring it. All you got to be is confident. And Connor Garland and Niels Hoaglander, quite honestly, some of the most confident hockey players right now on your Vancouver Canucks. All in all, though, they're all feeling it. I think that's the case when Rogers Arena is the way it is and you have Thatcher Demko back in net. It's that sureness, right? Your Vancouver Canucks, Pacific Division champions, your Vancouver Canucks being led by small giants with big hearts. One left to Niels Hoaglander and Connor Garland. Been so consistent pretty much all season. Look at this comment from Amphimus, okay? A member of the Discord. Join the Discord. The bio is below. We do a lot of talking on the toilet. But hey, we're there talking about your Vancouver Canucks. Uh, this is from Amphimus again. Heronic is so intense. Didn't re He didn't realize he was shoving Kuzi at one point after a whistle. Dude, Heronic doesn't care who he's pushing. As long as he's not on your team, that guy's going after you. He is mad after every whistle. Another guy that I cannot wait to see in the NHL playoffs, okay? And, and did you see that chirp? Everyone saw that chirp. Uh, one of the chirps of the year. Uh, with that accent, right? With his mannerisms. The mystique of Philip Peronic too, right? He's always so angry, but we never hear this guy speak. And what's he do? He embarrasses the Calgary Flames. Uh, with a holiday-like joke. And can you and I do this for like... 60 seconds. Just just give me some comments on Philip Ronick because I didn't know this guy was this intense. I didn't know this guy was going to be this mad after every shift. I didn't know this guy was going to be such a Canuck. And what I mean by that is he's a bro. He defends his goalie. He defends his bros. If you're on his team, you're family. And I'm just loving the intensity. There's this, uh, I don't know if the narrative is strong out there. But sometimes I do see it in the comments, right, on the live chat. And they're kind of just dissipating as the season kind of winds down because we've seen the opposite of what I'm about to say. But, yeah, a lot of you and you and you and you sometimes chime in about the lack of playoff experience and the lack of grit, right? The Canucks may be a soft team. They don't have that toughness in them. And I get confused because I feel as if all season this team has proven to be just that tough. Uh, they play with an edge. They don't back down. They defend each other. Again, game in and game out, we're seeing that version of the Canucks. And I got to take it back to this too, right? I got to be honest with the people. Uh, what happened about eight hours ago? Me just being a little pessimistic, not that confident because of the lack of five-on-five -five offense from this team, blinded by the want for more. When in front of me, again, all season long, this team has been pretty much well-structured, very disciplined, very focused, and again, tough. And that matters, especially for an inexperienced bunch going into the playoffs. Uh, the Vancouver Canucks, your Vancouver Canucks, are not going to be pushovers. Look at this comment from Allen, okay? Work boots were on tonight. They're on a mission. The Vancouver Canucks are a tough, tough, tough team. And I think about two instances that, you know, just... Makes sense. 
for why I think this team has a bit of magic around them, right? Because you need camaraderie if you want magic in sports. Now, what happened to Dakota Joshua, right? Contract year, meaningless shift at the end of a game against Chicago in Chicago. Connor Garland gets hit behind the net, and Dakota Joshua gets into a fight with the nobody, I think. I think. I don't even know the other guy's name. Maybe he's a somebody. At the end of the day, though, uh, what happens to Joshua? He hurts his wrist in a contract year. Risks a lot of dollars, possibly, because he got to defend his bro and misses a ton of game time. And when he comes back and a reporter asks him if he regrets that decision, he says no. He'd do that every time. Defend his bros. Uh, that's one instance. How about instance number two? Patterson in Arizona gets destroyed. I think it was by McBain or something from Arizona. Absolutely destroyed on the power play. Play goes the other way. And before Arizona could, you know, maybe capitalize on a scoring chance, JT Miller and that McBain guy get into a scrap. JT Miller in game 70-something. Risks it against a, a who? A who? Why? Because you got to defend the bros. You got to defend the honor. You got to defend the crest. It really matters for these guys to be Vancouver Canucks. Again, you're Vancouver Canucks. They're a tough hockey team. And they're a big hockey team on the back end. You, know, you mix in all of that. You mix in the short guys in Garland and Hoaglander and their work rate. They are going to get Rogers Arena bumping. Right off the jump next week. And that type of energy, right? It bleeds into other things. It, it makes you play a little quicker. It adds fluidity to your game when the crowd is giving you that much energy because of the effort physically from some of these players. And maybe just maybe because of it, guys like Patterson and Lindholm can convert offensively more consistently. Uh, both those players picking up assists today. Both those players playing pretty well today. Still want to see another level of efficiency offensively from those guys, but hey, a one step at a time, right? Oh, look at this comment from Mr. Whale. Demer is a wall. Demko, man, doing his thing. Andrew, how about this comment? 40 shots is too many. Uh, am I going to worry too much? I was thinking about this. I was thinking about this. Uh, this is the most shots a team has gotten against the Vancouver Canucks since, what, late February? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's been a while. A uh, part of me believes that the Canucks maybe were playing a little loose, especially there in the third period because they were up 3 nothing. Uh, they're looking forward to next week, right? The playoffs, the energy, uh, the flames. It, you, you just add up all that and you get maybe a lackluster effort in the third period and kind of just backing up. All that being said, I don't know if I have a problem with it. Maybe this was a psychological tactic from a guy like Rick Taki, you know? Uh, let Demko see a lot of pucks. Uh, maybe Demko wanted it. And now I'm gassing it up, being delusional. But at the end of the day, what I'm trying to say is, hey, I'm glad Demko faced a lot of rubber. And let's talk about the poisonous, right? Is that a word, poisonous? Uh, the rebound control, really, really strong from Thatcher Demko. His movements, calm, collected. Not a worry. Again, what did Mr. Whale say? The dude's a wall. Straight up. How about this, man, from Zach O'Mama? Winner of the tickets. Yes, the tickets from a couple weeks ago. She won, uh, Zach O'Mama won the tickets because of what? Uh, uh, they joined the Discord. Link in the bio. Anyways, Zacho says that the shots and the amount of shots don't matter if you can't score on them. We got outshot, but 50 wins is no easy feat. Third time in franchise history that that happens. Yo, your Vancouver Canucks, they're a 51 team. And a lot of that has to do with so many moving parts, right? Like, I feel like there are so many people in this organization responsible for getting this team to 50 wins. Hughes, Miller, Pedersen, Besser, Heronic, Dakota Joshua, Connor Garland. Carson Soucy for a stretch of games. Hey, Tyler Myers and Nikita Zadorov raising their floor. Noah Juleson raising the floor. Hey, you got to give some credit to Casey DeSmith, too. You know what I'm saying? The goaltending in general. 
all in all, the ability to have the, I guess, the privilege to be able to lean on so many facets of your team to generate wins is a, a thing that makes, again, the Canucks magical, possibly dangerous, a mystery, a team that, again, can beat you in so many different ways. Uh, 50 wins. If you ask me in September uh, if the Canucks were going to get 50 wins this season, Bro, I would have asked you what you're smoking. I don't want it. You're probably smoking some indica. Unreal feat. Your Canucks going back to the playoffs and going back to the playoffs as a contender. That's cool. That's really cool. Look at this comment from Alan. Okay, Nikita Zadorov and his presence makes the entire team a bit. Tougher, a great ad. The blue line is looking Vegas life like big and mobile. Yo, Nikita Zadorov, man. Been so, so impressive as a rental for the Vancouver Canucks. What a trade. You know, you talk about uh, the Lindholm trade with Calgary so much. And yeah, uh, we haven't we haven't seen the the best. It's making us a little worried. Uh, making us ultimately want more, right? And, and you know what? We're the Canucks. We're going to get some more games in the playoffs, and there's going to be more opportunity for Lindholm to, yeah, be a two-way guy and be a strong centerman in your bottom six. But again, this, uh, we want to see more flash. Hey, speaking of flash, I feel as if we've seen that from Nikita Zadorov in so many different ways. And we mentioned this earlier, right? The floor being raised. You, you see less and less mistakes game in and game out, week in and week out, stretch in and stretch out. From Nikita Zadorov. He is playing extremely well. And to Alan's point, the toughness, right? The swagger. It matters. Remember, right? Wallman, Detroit, where you at? Not in the playoffs. Ha, 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 ha. You know? A great show, great run. Maybe you should have gritted less and picked up another couple points earlier in the season. Oh, what happened in the rematch after Wallman grittied on the Canucks? Zadorov. You know what I'm saying? Had that flair, had that flash. Stepped up to Wallman when Wallman was in the face of Hoaglander. Uh, did his own gritty. A lot of swagger, man. The Canucks are a cooler place. A cooler team, I'm sorry. Rogers Arena, a cooler place to, to be. Uh, the work environment. More fluid because of a guy like Nikita Zadorov. It's just the truth. Look at this comment from the alphabet, okay? Myers should be a forward. Hey, Tyler Myers, man, two shorthanded goals in one season. Uh, yeah, just uh, a full 360 and a big 360, right? Type of season for that guy. Uh, remember some of the comments I made in games two, three, and four? If the math is correct, uh, go check out past episodes. It's all up. And for him and Tockett to, to figure this out, and, you know, you have to give Tockett a lot of credit, too, because he stuck with Myers like he stuck with Juleson. Uh, they were they were able to work things out, talk it out, uh, you know, maybe figure it on a on a type of philosophy that ultimately made Myers a more steady defenseman. There's still flaws to his game, right? He's still Tyler Myers takes a penalty, a dumb penalty here and there, but then you see moments like today where he has that outlier type of ability, right? Great skater, makes good reads every now and then. He can elevate. Uh, raises the floor once again for your Vancouver Canucks. Man, oh man. Hey, the floor's been definitely raised. Uh, the standard has been raised. Uh, the Canucks met pressure with pressure in the regular season. I'm curious to see how well they do it and how quick they do it in the, the Stanley Cup playoffs next week, right? Because it's it's different. It's going to be different for you and you and you and you and I as well, right? We haven't really experienced this in a lot of time, and these games are going to do something to our to our nervous system, right? Uh, look at Anthemus. Uh, 360 leaves you in the same direction, but we get you, okay? He, Tyler Myers made a 180. Hey, man. I'm just at the Don't Doze Art Lab, okay? Kyle Bowen. <laughs> Uh, we got some comments on Pedersen, too. Uh, we got a comment on Lafferty here, too, from Mr. Whale. I wish Lafferty had another level. 
I'm seeing some chemistry, man. I'm seeing some chemistry from from him alongside Pot Colson and Bluger, and the and the chemistry is not built off like offensive intelligence and communication amongst one another. It's more of a, a tenacious thing, right? And Lafferty is definitely feeding off of that, skating a lot harder. I mean, there, there's an ability for him to keep it at that pace, but maybe be a bit more physical as well. And get the crowd going, man. Who, who's going to be that guy? Who's going to be that guy that gets the crowd going in the playoffs during shift one or the first five minutes of game one in the Stanley Cup playoffs? You know what I'm talking about, right? Hockey is the greatest sport in the world in round one of the playoffs. Everyone's firing out the gate as if they were in a cannon. Everything ends with a body check. Who's going to be the guy that gets the crowd going right away? I, my money's on Niels Hoaglander, okay? It really is. And Andrew's money's on JT Miller and Connor Garland. Dude, JT Miller, 103 points as a 31-year-old. Giving me opportunity, okay? I'm balding. I'm balding. I really am. You can see it right here. Look at this. Look at this. And now I'm seeing JT Miller do what he's doing, a.k.a. getting way better. Uh, when he shouldn't be getting way better, right? Isn't he past his peak in 2024? And what did he do? Uh, leads his team in points by, I would say, a large margin. Uh, what a player. Ending off the season, pretty much. Uh, let's see if he plays against the Jets on an 11-game point streak. That's unreal. That's so surprising. Uh, JT Miller raising his ceiling. JT Miller... I'll say this too, right up there, par for par with Quinn Hughes is not only the MVP of this team, but the most consistent player since game one. Uh, look at this comment from Lucas, man. Uh, Pot Colson is going to evaporate somebody in the first 10 minutes of game one. That would be something. You know what? If he raises his floor, because right now his floor is at what? A four checker? A guy who's not afraid to lay the body? If some of the offensive instincts raise up for that guy, because we know it's there, uh, more specifically, if his shot comes back, right? If Bluger is going to be stapled to the fourth line with him and not get an opportunity with Joshua and Garland, maybe, just maybe, those two can have uh, this X-Factor type of production, man. The Vancouver Canucks are going back to the playoffs. Uh, you know what? Again, you know, there, there was a chance of this happening back in September. And we'd be so happy with a, a round one visit. Um, we would be not disappointed with a round one exit. We would take it, right? But right now, again, the Canucks finishing at the top of a pretty heavy Pacific division. Uh, they traded a bunch of picks in the last 12 months. I hope you know that the deal is, is um, <laughs> you should be hoping that the Canucks play in June. Put your energy there. Quinn Hughes for the con Smythe. Put your energy there. Because why not? Your Vancouver Canucks have never won a Stanley Cup before. Uh, we don't know the recipe. And right now, again, this feels too good to be true. But for me, I'm going to take it like this. Maybe, just maybe, this is our year. Because the magic is adding up differently. And difference, okay, if we're talking about outcomes, right? Because I want a different outcome than what I'm used to as a Canucks fan. Last question, okay, goes to Tyler M., okay? Do we want to finish first in the West? and most likely play L.A. or second in the West and play the Preds. I mean, we could finish first in the West and play L.A. or Vegas. Like I said, man, a lot of that's out of our control, right? Because Dallas is essentially in control of everything. You know, if, if they win tomorrow, get a point, they finish first, we don't have to really worry about L.A. or Vegas in the first round. But, hey, if they lose in regulation, I got to say this. If they lose in regulation, I want the Canucks to – to play Vegas or Los Angeles, a.k.a. get the first spot in the West. Why? Because the extra game matters because I'm thinking we're going to the conference finals. And B, I'm not scared of nobody. I'm not playing with that loser mentality. Oh, we have a chance to go first? Well, let's not let's not uh put our best lineup up in Winnipeg. Let's give our guys a break, okay? We don't need this win. Dude, if you have a chance to finish first in the West, you take it. Uh, look at Alan, okay? This is a good comment right here. And we're going to talk about this more tomorrow in the morning, okay? We'll be back in the morning tomorrow, me and Begsy. How long do you think it'll take for Bluger to get back on that third line with the boys? I love Lindholm Smarts, but man, Bluger and his quickness. 
it makes him more suitable for Garland and Joshua. Look, I don't know, man. Uh, it was a, it was a, it was a good game. It was like an eight out of ten game for Garland, Joshua, and Lindholm against the Calgary Flames. They did their thing, but um, I'm still, I'm still on the wagon, man. That those two played their best hockey with Teddy Bluger. This team played their best hockey when that was the best third line in hockey. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we also had somebody say this earlier, right? Maybe Tockett's playing games with all of us, including the NHL, and not icing his best lineup to confuse his opponents. Hey, again, maybe they do things differently. Who champions? And we're not used to this. Or we're not used to having this organization be led by Rutherford Alvin, Rick Tockett, Adam Foote, et cetera, Sergey Gonchar. We're talking about champions, real guys who got the job done. Again, things are different this year. Hey, my name's Kyle Bowen. We're doing this, this conversation, the Locked On Canucks conversation here at the Don't Doze Art Lab, home of the West Coast Bias. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for sticking around the whole season. Uh, we're almost at Game 82. This was our first year doing this with you and you and you and you. And we feel blessed, okay? We also feel like winners. Uh, the hope is back. Uh, you feel like yourself again because your hockey team is really good again. Don't feel ashamed about that, okay? You live one life. Escapism, it's a beautiful thing. It makes everything a little rosier. Uh, you deserve this. The Canucks deserve this. Uh, one luck to that team for doing this, proving me wrong. Again, my name is Kyle Bowen, K-Y-L-E-B-H-A-W-A-N. Join the Discord. Link in the bio. We'll see you tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Have a good morning, a good afternoon, a good night. If you're not watching this live, then I do not know when you're watching this or listening to this today. We truly do appreciate it. Peace. Your Locked On Canucks, 